You're good, Chuck. Okay. Are we recording? Hold on. Okay, go ahead, Chuck. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education being held virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. Today is Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. Can I have a roll call, Ellen, please? Yes, and good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granado? Present. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Mr. Riley? Here. Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson, Mr. Carey? Present. And Weathersfield High School student representative, Mr. Isaac Santos? Here. All present. Thank you, Alan. If we could all stand for a Pledge of Allegiance and Ms. DeStoli, please lead us. Farewell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of yeah. the United yeah. States of America, America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, under 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 God, Thank you. Moving on to approval of minutes. Ms. Granada, may I get a motion to approve the June 9th, 2020 regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting minutes? Right, so move to approve those minutes. Can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Comments? All right, with a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Opposed? Abstention, motion passes. Thank you. Next. Uh, want me to go? I make a motion that we approve the minutes for the June 10th, 2020 Special Board of Education meeting. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments? Seeing none with a motion on the table, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Moving Ellie, on to public. I, I don't know if Ellie public. got me in attendance. Yes, I did. Okay, thanks, El. I just Hello. checked the list. I see you signed in. Moving on to public comment. Mr. Emmett, is there anyone on the phone? No, sir. There is nobody on the phone at this point. All right, I will read one letter into record from Miss Maura Healy, 38 Silwell Drive. She writes, thank you for your work on the budget. With regards to reopening school in the fall, parents or stakeholders as mentioned in the comments at the last meeting. I would like to thank you, Chris, for your statements on this issue. While the reopening of schools is a public health issue, parents need to be involved in the decision. A group, committee, whatever you want to call it, needs to be formed immediately. A decision needs to be made as soon as possible. I understand the state government will provide guidelines in all, and I really hope the town of Weatherstone will lead and not follow. There will be decisions that many will not like or agree with, and I feel for Mr. Emmett. I'm an advocate for opening schools on time this fall and following the model of the majority of our colleges in the state of Connecticut will be using. Timely fall opening in-person classes until Thanksgiving. Distance learning until the new year. For the second half of the year, do something similar. Maybe just for seven to 12 grades, have distance learning. Require every student and teacher to go to class on time, be in class via virtual meetings every day. I think, I thank the IT staff and the tireless work of our administration, administrators this past spring, Maura Healy. All right, seeing no other public comment, moving on to communications. Uh, Mr. Terry, I have one person waiting. Oh, all right, Mr. Emmett. Caller, you're on.
Caller, go ahead. Hello. Hello, oh, please the say your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Frederick Towns in 11 Cole Drive in Wolcott, Connecticut. Previously, 10 Bermuda Road in Weathersfield, Connecticut. Do you, have, do you have public comment this evening, sir? Yes, I, uh, I just wanted to offer to the town of Weathersfield guaranteed minimum scholarships for every student in grades kindergarten through grade 11, ranging from a minimum of $8,000 per student to a maximum of $19,000 per student in kindergarten. These scholarships are only usable at 411 private universities that are members of a consortium called SAGE Scholars. Uh, however, if a student doesn't use the scholarship allocated to them, about 20% of it can be transferred to other family members if they attend one of these 411 private universities. I sent an email to the address, uh, uh, I don't have it in front of me, BOE, oh, BOE comments at weathersfield.me and uh, some of the details in a spreadsheet are in there. If there's no interest, uh, I'd like to hear back quickly on that so I can go off and uh, offer it to some other community. As I said, I've made this offer to you because uh, I had five children and they all went to Weathersfield Public Schools. Hello. Still on, sir. Are you, are you all set with your public comment? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else on the phone, Mr. Emmett? Uh, no one further, Mr. Carey. All right, moving on to communications then, Mr. Emmett. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I have several items for you this evening. I want to provide a reminder to all of our Weathersfield families uh, that our meal program has resumed at Weathersfield High School. Uh, meals will be served uh, during this summer from 11 o'clock to noon at Weathersfield High School. The summer meal program will run uh, currently now through Friday, August 14th. I'd like to provide a heartfelt congratulations to Isaac Santos and the class of 2020. While it wasn't a conventional, conventional graduation ceremony, it was an honor to be able to congratulate each student on June 12th. And with the governor's relaxing of the guidelines for outdoor gatherings, we have invited the class of 2020 back to the high school on the morning of July 6th for an opportunity to hear students uh, speak and hear their colleagues' speeches, valedictorian, salutatorian, and our own class president. In addition, we'll honor uh, several of our students that have uh, Board of Ed awards and superintendent awards as well. As we are limited to 150, this event will be exclusively for the students. Um, right now, we're looking to break it up into two sections uh, to meet the uh, governor's executive order. Again, uh, we do expect to be able to tape this event for the entire community to see, much like we live stream the graduation event. Very happy to report that the portables at Highcrest are currently undergoing renovation. After two exhausted years of waiting for bids, bids to come back, bids being overbid, um, this is an in-house project, so it's being done by our physical services department. Uh, I sent pictures out uh, to everybody last week. Uh, interior demo is completed at this point. Um, right now, there have been no surprises, which is a good thing, and uh, we expect to be on target and ready to go for any fall opening that we have. I um, want to talk a little bit about uh, the reopening committee. Um, we have one in place already that has multiple stakeholders on it. Um, we've wrapped up the 2019-2020 school year, so our attention is now fully on what the fall may look like. The focus of this committee is fourfold, supporting the health and safety of students, staff, and the community, 
continuing to build strong relationships with students and families, getting to know each learner and focus on formative assessments, and number four, providing equitable learning opportunities for all students. This um, committee has met twice. It's broken up into multiple subcommittees. Those subcommittees are looking at a variety of different avenues. Those avenues include facilities, district operations and health and safety, school operations, transportation and food services, as well as curriculum and special education. We are currently awaiting guidance from the state of Connecticut. Um, I was on a call today with my Hartford area colleagues. Um, the expectation at this point in time is that we will have some guidance coming from the state later this week. I do have a conference call with the Commissioner of Education coming up on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Once I have this information, I will be sure to get it out to the public. We'll be utilizing this guidance to help guide our direction in terms of how we reopen. Um, as Ms. Healy stated in her uh, communication, her public comment, um, it's certainly not going to be an easy task, but it's one that I think with all of our stakeholders, um, we will be able to tackle successfully. I want to be clear in understanding that my purpose for this committee is to make sure that we open schools safely. As I've said to the parents who've reached out to me already, I want nothing more than to see our students back in the classroom with their teachers face-to-face -face learning and engaged and growing academically, growing socially and emotionally. But we need to make sure that we're doing this in a manner that is safe and maintains the health and safety of our students as well as our staff. Within the scope of our committee, it includes two Board of Ed members who are also parents here in Weathersfield. Charles Carey and Ken Lesser, myself, Sally DeSoli, Assistant Superintendent, John Kazar, Director of Special Education, Elizabeth Friedis, Supervisor of Special Education, Trent Donahue, Director of Human Resources, Matt Kazaka, our Business Manager, Sarah Harris, Instructional Supervisor of Technology, Jeff Telke, Supervisor of Technology, Deb Murphy, Executive Assistant to the Superintendent, Patrick Cohn, Hammer Principal, Rosalind Bannon, representing the middle school, as principal, and Tom Moore, principal at Weathersfield High School. WASA representative Michael Maltesi, WFT representative Dan Jensen, representing the teachers, Linda Ciarcia, representing the nurses, Regina Vaughn, representing secretary para and clerical, Chloan Bobrowski, district head nurse, Sally Katz, director of physical services, Charles Brown, our director of the Central Connecticut Health District, and Tyler Kozakowski, our psychologist at Emerson Williams. In addition to these individuals, we will be floating in additional staff members and consultants to help us with the decision-making process. They include Jamie Davies, who's our food service director, as well as Dr. Patel, who is the district uh, consulting physician. So this uh, robust group of people has already started to do a lot of work. And I wanna be clear, it was stated at the last board meeting, we have every intention of engaging our parent stakeholders in this process. Um, we will be developing a survey to get uh, parent feedback in terms of what works. Um, obviously, as Ms. Healy said, and correctly, the decisions that are going to be made are not going to be favorable to everybody. But again, I think if we make them in the uh, frame of making sure that we are keeping kids and staff members healthy and safe, that is the correct way to go. So. Uh, again, once I get the information coming from the state, I anticipate it uh, at some point on Thursday, I'll make sure I get that information out to you as well as the community. And last but not least, I had mentioned at the uh, most recent Board of Education meeting about uh, the need to go from anger to action. I just want to let members of the public and members of the board know that we are continuing that conversation. Uh, this week, we had a conversation with a consultant, uh, Ingrid Kennedy from CERC to talk about the process of um, developing conversations around race, around equity, around cultural awareness, and around culturally uh, effective teaching. So we've got a lot of work to do in this realm. Um, I'm pleased with the direction we're going. I'm also pleased that we're partnering with the town. This is not exclusively a Board of Education situation. This is a Town of Weathersfield situation that we need to dig into much more deeply. So, with that, that's communications. Thank you, folks. Let me unmute myself. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to an action item. 
Mr. Michaels, do we have a recommended motion to approve the revised 2020-21 operating budget? Yes, I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the revised operating budget for the 2020-2021 school year in the amount of $56,902,759. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. Um, Mr. Emmett, or Mr. Kazaka, whoever likes to speak. Uh, uh, Mr. Kerry, I'd be happy to speak on this. Again, uh, one of the goals that we had this year was to um, create the budget process and start it earlier in uh, the year. Um, we were successful in doing that. I think another um, aspect that we were really adamant about was making sure that we engage the public uh, much more than we did last year. I think we were successful in that. Um, I brought forward a budget that was unanimously approved by the Board of Education. Um, we made reductions. We recognize savings in this year's operating budget um, that we can apply toward next year. And I think we worked in uh, good collaboration with Town Council and put forth a budget that maintains all of our staff and all of our programs. Um, and this budget was unanimously approved uh, certainly for the first time in my tenure in Wethersfield, which goes back 12 years, is unanimously approved um, uh, re most recently in May. So um, I'm comfortable with this budget and I just want to applaud the Board of Ed members, members of Town Council, and certainly the community uh, for supporting this and supporting our kids. For the public, could we get a rundown of the reductions? Mr. Kazaka? Sure. What we had to do initially was add back the increase in the pension contribution. That was $162,722. And then for the actual reductions, we are taking $625,000 from this year's savings to apply to next year's employer health insurance contribution. We have $100,000 that we're reducing technical equipment, which will be supplanted by the CARES Act funding. And we recently had two PPTs and we have identified students who are coming back into district next year. So that's a savings of $150,000. We are reducing our substitute teacher allocation by $60,000 anticipating that there will be some hybrid form of distance learning next year. And finally, we have a reduction of 38,500 for transportation related to ESY this summer as it's going to be distance learning. And the net of all that is 810,778 in reductions. Thank you, Mr. Kazako. Any questions or comments from board members? All right, seeing none with a motion on the table and a second. All in favor of approving the revised budget, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Moving on to discussion items, announcements and information. Um, please look in your packet. There may be board meetings scheduled over the summer. Keep an eye out for that and if you can't make one please let the chair know of the committee 10 20 that meeting was to go over the evaluation of the superintendent in that's what we did tonight we had the finance and operations committee meeting 6 23 20 mr michaels you want to give a quick synopsis sure uh mr kazaka sort of stole my thunder there uh but we are looking at about 632, 917,000 under budget. And I think the big takeaway that we talked about was that that's going um, to be moved over uh, to cover, to offset next year's uh, health insurance is where that savings will go. Um, other than that, pretty much the same. And then we also talked about um, the reduction um, for next year's budget during our meeting as well. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Meeting scheduled at, right now, currently there are none. Unfinished business, there is no unfinished business. Public comment, Mr. Emmett, anyone on the phone? No one on the phone at this point in time, sir. Thank you. Next item is a proposed executive session to discuss and set superintendent's goals 
for 2020, 20, yeah. 20, Excuse me. Yep. Yeah. Can I just wait a minute? We had some board comments. Oh, I skipped board comment. Yeah, you got it. Okay, okay. board comment. Thank you. Go, Bobby. Go ahead. Well, you know what? Um, and, and we won't say that um, it was item seven. Um, there was a CREC meeting. I wanted to talk about that, okay? So there was- yeah, That's fine. There was a CREC meeting on Wednesday, June 17th. Again, a virtual meeting. Um, the CREC Council is the Capital Region Education Council, of which Weatherfield is a member, along with 35 other surrounding towns. The council is responsible for the regional magnet schools and project choice. Um, very much like us, the CREC administration is planning for reopening and awaiting further guidance from the state. Patrice McCarthy, the CREC liaison to the General Assembly, said that all is quiet at the LOB building and that she does expect a special session to pursue added educational monies and to pursue equity in distance learning. Um, an interesting part of this meeting is each council member representing a member in town was to present a list of programs that their town utilized, um, for, uh, utilized with CREC and for Weathersfield, we use CREC for outplacements for their magnet schools, consulting services, evaluation, there's a lot of them, assistant listening services, audiological maintenance services, consulting teacher services, auditory processing management, FM, DM system outplacements at the magnet schools for speech, psychological services, OT and PT, paraprofessionals, also consultants for courageous conversations and for English language learner strategies. And we do send teachers to various workshops that are offered by CREC. And additionally, we do have teachers that attend various CREC councils for ECE, math and language arts. Okay, I wanted to get that in. Thank you. Oh, I keep Chuck. Yes, thank you. Board, board comment, Kenny. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I actually have uh, two quick questions. One is, um, do we have the regular meeting schedule for the summer Board of Ed meetings for July and August? Um, and the second question is, is I guess, to Michael. Um, I didn't fully understand the public, and you don't have to answer now, but the public comment, the speaker, but it seemed like he was offering um, scholarships to our students. Um, do you have any more information on that? So those are my two questions, summer schedule uh, for us and the public comment. I didn't fully understand what the gentleman was talking about. Yeah, I, I'm going to actually, I'll speak to the second question first, Ken. The um, Sage Scholar, I don't have a lot of information on it. I got that email this afternoon, so I'll certainly uh, follow up with Mr. Townsend and get some additional information and see if it's something that uh, would be um, good for our district and good for our kids. So I'll follow up on that one. And then with regard to the um, schedule of board meetings, typically speaking, we do not have uh, board meetings during the scope of July and into August. Usually the second uh, Tuesday in August is when we'll begin. I will tell you that in the event that we have any business, whether it be policy updates that must be done or um, for example, with our reopening committee, might we need to adjust our uh, calendar for 2021? We will absolutely um, bring together the Board of Ed for a special board meeting. Um, and the other piece at this point in time, I still don't have any real clear guidance with regard to how much longer we're going to be going into virtual mode. Um, I'm with you this evening from council chambers um, with our friends from the IT department. And right now this um, chambers is still set up as the emergency operations center. So. Hopefully soon we'll be able to get back to business as usual and we can all come together face to face. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chuck, Wilson. Chuck yeah. I have a comment. Um, Michael and uh, Chuck, I'm glad to hear of the members you've involved in the um, reopening committee. All of them are hard workers. And um, I seem to be the one, maybe, I don't know, many of you that live in town, um, who get caught in a grocery store and they say something to me about, oh, the reopening is going to be doing this. And I go, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. So, Michael, I appreciate your thoughts that will keep me or all the board members as up to date as possible because you get caught by somebody and you say, I don't know. And they're sure they have the right information, you know. So, I appreciate Ken and you and Chuck keeping us, in, uh, I don't know, updated. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Elaine. 
Any other questions or comments? Isaac, for the last time, buddy. Uh, uh, for my final board comment as a student rep, I'd like to thank the members of the graduation committee, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Moore, our class advisor, Ms. Bellinger, and everyone else, and all the students who helped support and create the idea of the motorcade. It was a huge success. The Almost the whole town was out. Some social distance, not, not all, but you know, it's better than none. Uh, but they all came out to support us, and as a senior, and I'm sure all the other seniors agree, it was a it was a great event, and I'm sure we'll see all the seniors back July 6th. Thank you, Isaac. Any other comments? Seeing none, now I can move on to executive session to discuss and set superintendent's goals for 2020, 2021 school year. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? We are into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. We'll get in the session. Michael has to record us. Okay. We're recording now, folks. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. A second? Second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy okay, everybody. your summer. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Kelly, good luck. Good night, everyone. Yep. Thank Stay you. Good luck, good Kelly. Good night, Haley. Good luck. All the best, Kelly. Stay Let safe, everyone. Send us an email. Bye, everybody.